Are you skipping essays or you are getting to them when you might have enough time? If you're doing this, you're probably robbing yourself of the chance to make full points on your exam. I think you know this. But what makes a student enthusiastic to dive into essays? And what allows you to concretely follow your progress so that you can influence an uptick of your score without being stopped by the fear of not knowing how to answer the prompt, the fear of looking back and realizing that you didn't know anything at all, the fear of being frozen between reading the prompt and writing the essay out, and really the fear of failure, fear of doing all of that work and looking back and realizing that you're way off of the mark. If you don't get past these fears, you'll likely stall or avoid essays altogether. But practicing your essays and also your practical tests portion, if you have it, is very important for you to get meaningful data, allowing you to know where to improve so you can move forward. Most bar takers that I assist get stuck because even though they can see they didn't do well on their practice, they don't quite know what to do to do better next time besides study harder. They'll get this huge enveloped idea that all their studying up to this point was worthless because they didn't do great on that essay. Moreover, because practicing essays takes so long and it feels like there's just so much time that passes between your output and the response that it almost feels too suspenseful for them. And it almost feels like it'd be a huge letdown if they had put all this work into it only to find out hours later, rather than right away if you're doing a multiple choice question, that they were off the mark and they really can't course correct anymore. It's just too discouraging and disheartening. And I get all of that. And that's why in this video, I'm going to help you with quick tips to give you a chance to crank those essays out really fast and to mark where you're going with your progress, whether or not you feel as courageous as a prolific essay writer. So stick with me till the end of this video, take notes on these tips so that you can start to get some essay practice in and feel more confident, stable, secure about your ability to perform on the essay portion of these exams. Hi, I'm Jennifer DeClaire, Bar Exam Mindset Mentor and Attorney Life Coach, helping you to pass this bar exam and to build a law life you're absolutely in love with. In this video, we'll dive straight into essay practice tips. And if you know that you need help one-on-one, -on -one, you need some specialized tips, strategies, or encouragement, look below for a free 15-minute call that you can book with me. We'll find out what's going on with you and point you in the right direction. So with the essays, I highly encourage you first to gather as many topics together as you possibly can. And this is important because data is going to be built on your practice sessions. You're going to need as many practice sessions as possible. Now, before you get scared, thinking that each practice session is going to be an hour in length, we have a truncated way of getting those essays out of you so that you can focus on the most important things the issues, the rules that apply. If you can spot the issue in the rule, then some analysis will do. And you can think about the analysis part a little bit later, but first we're gonna cover making sure that you are able to spot all the issues and rules that pop up in your essays. It's not the only thing that is important, but it is your springboard. Because if you can't spot the issues and rules, then you don't have anything to analyze. So let's start with that part first. Let's say that you bring up a torts essay and you have the whole prompt ahead of you and you can see clearly that there are some torts in there, but you need a quick way of assessing whether or not you would do well on this essay were you to fully write it out. This is what you do. 
whether you are a visual learner, audit auditory learner, or kinesthetic learner, you're going to put pen to paper right now. If you're visual, this may look a little different from if you're auditory or pure kinesthetic. I'll speak to the visuals because I'm a visual and I love doing things like this because it's just easier. So essentially, I personally dispense with the whole essay writing or even outlining to begin with. And my outline is just going to look like a circle with spokes, right? A wheel with spokes. So I draw my circle with the with the big topic. And then from that circle are all the torts that I identified that could be sued for. Let's say that's what the call of the question was. What are all the different torts that you can sue over? And so from the main topic, I have my spokes and I have my individual torts that, that would be sued over. These are the issues, right, that are being called upon. And within each of these torts, what do I need? I know I'm going to need my rule, the elements that apply, and probably some treatment of damages. I'm also going to be looking at defenses. And I know that in my mind, whenever I look at torts, and somebody is asking me to discuss what torts would be involved here. I'd be looking at the actual tort itself. What is the rule that, that creates the tort, right? That creates the action. What is the rule there? What are the elements of that rule? What are possible damage considerations and defenses? And I will do that all around. Probably would take a very similar approach if there were a contracts question. While you have the big issue going on, you have the individual types of actions that might be taken from that scenario. And so I would address each type of action or maybe topic of argument that would be going on between the two parties. When you're able to just do a brainstorm session like that, to get out the headings, essentially, is what these will be, are your headings and subheadings, you're able to quickly look at your what you threw down on that paper and the model answer and see whether you missed anything. So for example, if your torts uh, included intentional infliction of emotional distress, but left out the tort for invasion of privacy. And we know that in some jurisdictions, invasion of privacy is not a valid tort anymore or is just disfavored by the court. But let's say you're in a jurisdiction where it's still an active thing. Well, if you did all of this, really just threw it down on paper, take you about 10 minutes, and you're talking just the headings of the type of torts that could be had and a quick note about the rule and the elements, what damages are allowed or sought for, and the defenses, right? And so with the defense, you're not talking about actually applying it. You're talking about what the name of that defense is. Simple, okay? So when you're able to do all that, well, we're going to say it's going to take you about 10 minutes to just throw that down on a paper. And because I'm a visual person, I'm going to like my little diagrams and my spokes and whatnot. And this helps me organize. But somebody who's not visual may want to actually make an outline with just the headings and the subheadings. Okay. So you are able to take that, read the model answer and see whether you named what's popping up in that model answer. And then catch what popped up in the model answer that you did not have on your brainstorming sash. Bring that in. And once you bring that in, you get to ask yourself, how would I have known to bring up this tort, right? What are the key phrases? What's the clue in this fact pattern that would have told me that I need to bring up this tort? Or how else can I hook up this particular tort to another one? So for example, if you ever have a, a libel tort then you could definitely be looking also at an invasion of privacy tort, right? And this is just for examples, not saying that that's the actual link that you would make. But if there is something that would jog your memory about this other tort that you left out or forgot, 
you want to start creating those links. Those are what will save you when it comes to the actual essay itself. So how does this translate to you doing well on an essay? Simply, for example, we're sticking to torts. If you could remember the tort itself, the rule that applies, damages and defenses, then you've got all the information you need to apply to the actual facts. The fact pattern can change all day and night, but you've got the information in your head that you're going to need to have in your head on bar exam day. Applying it to the facts at hand is a later step, but can be taken more successfully because your stress is alleviated in knowing that you can spot all the issues and bring up all the rules that apply in a tort fact pattern or a contract fact pattern. So these are the kind of drills that you would be doing, essay drills that you would be doing instead of, can I write out the whole essay? Now, do you need to write out the whole essay? Yes, you do. And the way to do this in a very easy format is covered in other videos that I have inside of Bar Exam Ready. But this beginning part where you get to test your knowledge and say that at least I know that I would spot the issues and I would bring in all the relevant rules when needed. That is such a huge weight off. And this you can practice in 10 minute bursts by just grabbing a fact pattern, reading it through and throwing down your headings and subheadings, whether you do it as a diagram, circles and lines all over the paper, you do it in a nice, neat outline, however it is that you go about doing it, you just need to get it out of your head and onto the paper so that you can test whether you have in your head what you would need in order to succeed on that essay. If you can master this, your confidence will skyrocket and then you can confidently tackle the next step of actually doing the analysis, but you're halfway to gold if you can get this part done. Now, from my experiences as, as a bar essay grader, you will find that about half of the points available to you are allotted to your issue and your rules. So if you're able to master this part, you're really halfway there. And this part can be mastered in 10 minute bursts. Just grab as many essay prompts as you can and test whether or not you would have brought up everything you need to bring up were you on exam day. And you can do that with a simple note, sheet of notebook paper and a pen and 10 minutes. Look below for resources I've linked if you want a streamlined way to cover all the portions of your bar exam preparation in the time that you have available without extra fluff and nonsense activities that won't raise your score anyway, look for bar exam ready below. And then also look for that 15 minute link if you need to have a short and quick consultation about where you are with your bar prep and what you need to achieve in order to accomplish a pass score. See you in the next video. If you want to talk about where you are with your bar prep, how to surmount your current hurdles so that you can feel confident in gaining a pass score. See you in the next video.